We are um, Image Factory Experimental Photography Workshops. Um, as Deborah said, I'm Sandra Carrion, and then we have uh, Sandy Daniel and Lois Yeomans. And let me just tell you a little bit about who we are and what we do. So, Sandra Carrion, I'm a photography teacher. I was uh, teach. I still teach. I teach at Nassau Community College, um, and I taught for 30 something years in a uh, high school on Long Island, all photography. And uh, always practiced my craft and showed my work and was involved with um, especially Soho Photo Gallery. It's where I do most of my most both most of my work, but that's changing now to Huntington also where we have a couple more galleries out there. Um, I just love doing things that were you were told not to do, changing the rules or looking at something that makes it not so uh, commercial looking or trying to make my photography look uh, a little bit more artistic or um, unphoto like but keeping all the all the aesthetics and beauty of the, of the medium while taking it somewhere else and when we have shows we're usually trapped in a corner somewhere with people asking us how'd you do that how'd you do that what is this what is this and you're explaining over and over and over again what the process is, how it works, uh, what do you need, and where do you find out how to do this stuff. So we finally, last April, decided, well, it's time to maybe do something with this. And we formulated this experimental photography, Image Factory Experimental Photography Workshops. So it's go been going pretty good. We've been piloting it this spring and into the summer. And um, so far, we're, we're going to finish up our season in July and hopefully pick it up again in the fall. Uh, we'll take the summer to regroup and see if we should we continue or should we can it or whatever. But so far it's been a lot of fun. So moving on. So we're based out of the two, since we don't have a place, we don't have a home or a studio and we don't want to spend money renting one on our own yet, we're, we're working out of the two galleries. Soho Photo in, uh, on White Street, downtown New York, and Photo Photo Gallery in Huntington, Long Island. Um, and the two spaces have, you know, beautiful, you know, they're both beautiful galleries and it's very conducive to having the, the workshops there. So we actually rent the space from them. We're, we're part of those galleries, but we work separately out of there. Um, so, and what do we do? So we explore traditional and experimental aspects of photography. Uh, we are always searching for like new new things to do, and and uh, we call it R and D. And we go to Home Depot, we go to the dollar stores, where you know we're in the dump looking for things to like. How can we bring this into our photography somehow? Collecting dead animals and all sorts of uh, good things like that, so we can incorporate it into into our work. And then we like to take things from. Um, uh, m traditional materials and find new uses for them. So that's what we're going to do with you a, a little bit today. So the workshops that we are offering right now are iPhone photography, digital boot camp for uh, beginners who want to learn a little bit more about their cameras, or the biggest question we get is how do you get the pictures off of the camera? I, they have the car people just keep buying cards and they just keep taking pictures and they just don't know what to do with it. So this digital boot camp came from there. Uh, we have a faux tin type uh, that Sandy uh, Daniel developed. Um, there's a sample up there, you can take a look at it later. Uh, and we do faux image transfer, which um, Lois is the master of the uh, faux image transfer. She's going to be doing that with you later on. And uh, the faux emulsion lifts, and these are based, those, those uh, two, the last two, are based on the old Polaroid processes back from the uh, 80s and 90s. So those are the workshops that we're offering now. And we're also in talking about lots of different things uh, to come. So today, we're going to start with the faux emulsion lifts and then finish up with the alcohol image transfer. And the way we want to work this, um, this presentation to you is I'm going to show you a video. It's a time lapse video, so it's about 10 seconds long. And then I'll slow it down, and we'll break down what you have to do. So you'll see how the process goes. And then um, I'll demonstrate how to do it, exactly how to do it. You'll watch on the screen of how to put all this the goop down and, and get the image to go to where it's going to go. So both of these are based on um, the Polaroid processes from the past. So the, what we did, uh, Lois and I got together the other day, and we actually did some real 
emulsion lifts. We started with, you know, I found some old, uh, old pictures from, you know, 20 years ago, 15 years ago, and we actually went through the whole thing. So I'm going to show you that now. So if you just watch the screen. Okay, so what Lois is doing right here, she's taping the back of a piece of film, uh, getting it ready for the next step of the, this is the traditional emulsion lift. Okay, she's putting masking, uh, just clear tape on the back, packing tape. Okay, she's trimming the edges. Now here, this is boiling water going into the tray. Remember this? Who, who's done this before? The old time, long time ago. You've done this? Okay. Okay, so you put boiling water into the tray with the picture, with the tape on the back, and you you let the emulsion kind of bubble. Is it for Polaroid? This is the, this is the, this is the, this is an old type 669 film. Fuji makes a type 100 film now that you can use also. So if you wanted to do the, the old fashioned way, you can do that. We're going to show you the old fashioned way on the video, but then we are going to do the new one. Okay. So this is this is original. So you have a point, yeah, you have a place of a reference, you know, of what, you know, what we're doing, okay? Okay, then you, uh, after it's been in the water, the hot boiling water for about five minutes, uh, and there's no timing this, it's just you look at it when the emulsion on the picture starts to bubble, because it's plastic, when that starts to bubble, you take it out, you fish it out, so you have a spatula in my hand, fish it out because it's boiling water, and you put it into cool water. And now you use tepid, good. You use something to um, scrape the emulsion up. You actually you peel it away, you lift it away from the substrate that it's on. Okay, and it comes off and it's like a jellyfish. It's just like this glob in the water. And then you scoop it out of the water, you put it onto a piece of plastic, you manipulate it, you get it back into a shape that looks like a picture, and then you transfer it onto a piece of uh, a good fine art printmaking paper. Okay, so this case it was Arches 88. If you pick it up, if you just pick up that jellyfish type thing, it, it has no shape. Because the substrate has been it's been separated from its background, okay. So that's the traditional way of doing it. So what we do in in our thing is we take a look at what's um, the characteristics of these. So the characteristics of an emulsion lift is that kind of crinkly edge, um, the crinkles inside the the uh, picture itself. Um, over here, I don't know if you can. Well, can't really see, but over here. These, these crinkles in here. They're not in the picture. That's the emulsion actually just being crinkled up. Um, and you can move it around a little bit. So that was the fun part about doing these emulsion lifts. So now, the faux emulsion. So this is going to be our interpretation of this process. All right, let's try the faux emulsion. Again, real quick, so everybody ready? Okay, so the first step here Tape down your, tape down your background. All right, and we're using a product called Super Sauce. This is a sauce that is made by somebody else. We're working on our own formula right now, um, but we're still developing that. So we, we're, we're going to work with the one that we're, you know, 100% positive of. And it's, I'll give you instruct, I'll give you something later on that'll tell you uh, where you can get it. So you paint the super sauce right onto the plastic. You have to print your print out on an inkjet printer using archival pigment inks. Okay? And you have to print onto inkjet transparency film. Remember in school the teacher would put the sort of transparency on that machine and, and project it? Well, it's similar to that except you can't, uh, you can't buy it anymore. You have to buy it from this one place that sells this special stuff because not all of those transparency films will work. In fact, very few of them will. You have to get the right stuff. All right, so you paint the super sauce onto the front of the... And I'm only painting the image. 
Here's the final. Here. Here's the final. Uh, the final print. <coughs> I have it passing around. Okay, so you can see the two. The the, the character what we're looking for is the character characteristics of the original um, emulsion lift. The crinkles, the rough edges, all that stuff. Okay. So what we do in the workshops with this is we teach you how to prepare your images so that they kind of, you know, are pre presented the right way so that they look, so that they will transfer properly and look like a traditional um, faux, uh, emulsion lift. Want to pass that back? That's not the faux. This is no, the real the one. This is the real one. And where's the faux one? There's the faux. Okay. All right. All right, so Matthew, you want to zoom over to here? Okay. So I'll show you how to do that print. And then I'll show you, you're all going to go out of here with a very small transfer, okay? You're going to do little ones, all right? So because I'm doing a larger one, I need a bigger brush and I need a, big, and I need a brayer. You're not going to need the brayer for this. So here's my um, transfer, and the picture is printed on this side. Okay, so when you get your little samples, what's facing you is the, that's the side you're going to coat with the super sauce. You know how you tell what side to print on in a, on a um, inkjet paper or film? Sometimes it's cut on the corner. Sometimes it's cut. This one has tape, but if you have stuff that doesn't have anything like that, you just touch it with your tongue or if you don't want to do that, Lips. wet your finger and then you can feel it. It's a little stickier on the side that has the emulsion on it. So that's how you can tell. Now I'm going to paint just on the image. I'm not going to be slathering this stuff all over the place. It's just going to be contained to the image. So this is a combination of, uh, it's got an alcohol base. So that's why we have them covered because it does uh, evaporate. evaporate. And you want to put a clean, thin coat. And you don't want to go too far over the edge of your image. This is one of those examples where you don't want a whole bunch of it. You just want enough to cover it. Now from here, I just taped down a piece of the paper. And this paper, this is called clay paper. I have a materials list coming up later. This is a clay board. You set it up and you roll it down. Use the brayer. If you don't have a brayer, you can use your hand because it, it comes up with air bubbles. I know you can see it here, but you see how it's like pulling everything. I'm trying to get those air bubbles out. And it's making, by getting those air bubbles out, it's making those crinkles in the uh, image. Stretching. It's stretching, yeah. So if you really went at this and started rolling like crazy, you would end up with a mess. And keeping with the, with the uh, Polaroid serendipity, you can do this five times in a row and you'll end up with five different pictures. It's never going to be the same twice. All right. I think we're down. I don't want to push it too much. And then you peel this back. See, it's not coming up, so I'm going to push it right down. And you Walk this off, and there you go. Now the bubbles that are in there, you just you can use a pin or something sharp just to pop them. And there's the finished finished print. So it's got a lot of imperfections in it. Um, Lois had a good uh, comment in one of her handouts that she gave out. She said, if you're looking for um, something perfect, you're doing the wrong thing. Mm -hmm.
Yeah, it is perfect. I like you. There we go. What it's intended to be is perfect. Well, yeah. There you go. So here, so you can see even with these two, they're very, they're different. There's the same image, but they're they're slightly different. Uh, you know, the, the edges are different. The little crinkles come up in different places. The air bubbles show up in different places. No, you can't stack them. But you're going to do a real small one, and you'll do that first. So by the time you leave here, it'll be enough that you can get it home and not, you know, it won't be, won't be a disaster. It won't make a mess. Can you do it on any other kind of paper besides that? Uh, you can. But this clay board, well, that's a different, yeah, that's yeah. different, yeah, that's a different process. Could you do it on this kind of paper? Uh, you can. You can. This happens to be like almost like 100%, this clay paper. Um, or this, sometimes it's called stone paper. And I'll give you the, uh, the, the list in a minute. So here's what you're going to do when, when you come up. You're going to either go to Lois Sandy or come up here. We'll give you a little piece of clay paper. Uh, you'll get a little uh, image taken uh, directly off of Flickr uh, in, their, in their free area and a piece of stone paper. And what you'll do. And the, paper, the negative that you get, or the image you get, will we'll have a piece of clean paper underneath it. So, now I forgot which is the side. This side. See? All right, you'll take a little brush. I wonder if I can prop this up somehow. You know what, I'm gonna just do it like this so you can see on the screen. You'll take a little bit of this super sauce right over the image. Yeah, I'm going to tell you where I'm going to tell you where you can buy it. All right, and then take your clay paper, just turn it over, lay it down, and then to get the crinkles, all right, you can lift, lift and twist a little bit. You can you can kind of m manipulate this a little bit here by rocking it back and forth slightly. And because this is so small, you don't need to do anything with this. But just check it for the air bubbles. And then when, as soon as you finish with that, you just peel it back. Put it back if it's not coming off. I lost, I lost her face. Does it, get to, does it get to a point that if you leave it too long, it'll just stick? Yeah, it, it's, it starts to like eat away. What, what's happening here is the um, inkjet, the inks, are dissolved by the alcohol that's in the solution. So this is the part I don't, I don't understand. <laughs> if the alcohol dissolves the image, then when you paint it on with a brush, why doesn't it go all over the place? Yeah. Reaction time. I yeah. It, you have to be kind of quick with putting this sauce on, and you can't uh, like you know like go over it and over it and over it. It's kind of quick, just a stroke and then another stroke and then transfer it down. There you go. All right. So what you'll do, you'll do this, and then we'll um, you'll put this like on the, under your chair. We'll go on to the second part, and then you can. Uh, then we'll ask questions. Then we'll do questions about the faux emulsion lift while we set up and change for the transfers. All right, so to answer the questions that came up, like where do you buy this? What is that? Do you need this? Do you need that? OK, so here is the materials that you'll need to do this process. I didn't put things in there like the the uh, the 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 brushes, whatever. No, there's no handout. What we have is for you is, uh, this is like I said, this is a little taste. This is an appetizer of what the, uh, what the workshop is like. You'll be doing this for three hours. And of course, there'll be a lot more in-depth information about um, preparing your files, how to print it out. Uh, when we do this, we have printers there. And we'll print, you know, you'll, you'll actually come with your files. And you'll make the prints. And you, know, you walk out of there with, um, with about six emulsion lifts when you're finished. So the stone paper is something, um, what was it, did he say New York Central? 
might have it, or uh, maybe Dick plug that. You have to call and you have to ask around for this stuff. It's not something you're going to be able to find like everywhere. Uh, Daniel Smith has it. Um, uh, you know, just kind of look around. It's, either, it's called stone paper or clay paper. Uh, Dick Blick has something called a clay board, which is mounted on a piece of wood. Um, that's nice too, but that's expensive because each one of those boards, you use them once and then that's the end of it. So you need your image printed on DOS film. So this transparency, can I just use this for one second? This stuff, the little images that you got, is printed on DAS film, D-A-S-S, -S, which stands for Digital Art Studio Seminars. And that's their website right there, Digital Art Studio Seminars. There's a woman who runs that. Her name is Bonnie Lahotka. Is that how you say it? Lahotka? Lahota. Lahota. And she, uh, she does a lot of this type of stuff. In fact, that's where we learn most of it, like researching her. That's the only place you can get the transparency. That's the only place you can get this transparency film that we know of right now. There used to be another film out called Apollo, and it was wonderful, it was cheap, it was all over the internet. Now, you, you can go to, uh, you know, go on there and Google it and, and try to find it what and get it on Amazon. It's not the same. It won't work. What they don't make it anymore. What is the Super Sauce? Now, Super Sauce Wait, is... Wait, did you just say don't try to even... Don't yeah, buy Apollo. anything yeah, but the DOS film. But Apollo, if you could find it? No, you'll no. not find it. Okay. I even called them. I called them to find out what how come everybody's selling this under this, this code number, and then it comes to your house, and it's the wrong stuff. And they go, well, we stopped making that. Okay. So they don't even make it anymore. The manufacturer is, doesn't, do, doesn't do it anymore. So it's, you have to find a transparency film that will allow the ink to be printed on it without, you ever run, um, like a piece of uh, plastic through your printer? I tried. <laughs> you get like soup. You get ink soup that come out. No. Now, Pictorico and Ink Press and all those other things, that, that holds on to the image too strong. It's ceramic. You're going under. You don't want that. You want something that's going to allow the image not to be, you know, like uh, mushy when it comes out of your printer. I mean, you saw, like, we can touch, you can touch this. And it's not going. It's not going to come off that little uh, little sample that you had of the, the the Glamour Girl. You know, it's printed on there, and it, it, it that will hold it. The only thing that will release it is the alcohol, and the alcohol is uh, is is that's what's the base for the super sauce. So you buy her secret formula super sauce. Okay, it's called super sauce, and you mix it up according to her dilution. Which is one? It's one part of uh, one ounce of super sauce to four ounces of 91% alcohol. The regular alcohol that you know the doctor uses on your skin and everything—that 67%, whatever that's in the hand sanitizer—won't be enough. It won't work. You have to have the 91% for this. How many ounces of alcohol did you say? Two. It's four ounces of alcohol to one um, okay. one tablespoon of the super sauce. Right. Yeah, the directions are on it. The directions are on it when you buy it. Can that be, can you use that later on or you got to use it? Yes, no, you can use it. I mean, we, we just dumped it all because it's like, you know, we just dumped it because we don't want to take it home. But, um, yeah, you can mix it up. It lasts a very long time. I had super sauce at home one time. I was using it for my classes, and it was a, over a year old, and it was working fine. After you mix it with it? After you mix it, yeah. And before you mix if you get it and you mix it, it's a white liquid. It's a light, white, creamy liquid. Um, uh, before you know that that will last forever. But once you mix it, it does have a little bit of a, you know. They say use it as soon as you can. But okay, so you must be printing on a on a printer that has archival pigment inks. Okay, um, when you print, remember you need to flip your image over because you are transferring. And if it's like these don't matter, but if you had uh, something with lettering in it, you want to make sure that once it's transferred, it's not backwards. Um, and you can only get it at the digitalartstudioseminars.com, the, the film and the super sauce, okay? And the soft rubber brayer, if you, like I told someone here, when you're doing those little tiny ones, that's one thing, but when you're doing a great big one, you need to, something to, um, you know, you want to make sure that it's going to be down completely and you need a brayer and you need a clean, you know, you want to work on a clean surface like we're doing here. So we have a workshop, this workshop, the Emulsion Lift on Saturday. 
and one of the deals that we had for you folks today is if you were interested in taking any of our workshops, any one of them that you register for today with us and put a deposit down on, uh, you can get 10% off. Okay? So that's just today's special. Yes? Oh, good question. They have it up to 24 inches wide on a roll. They just recently made 17 inch wide on a roll. And then they have the 8.5 by 11 sheets, and they have 13 by 19 sheets. And the 8.5 by 11 comes in um, smallest quantity you can get is a, a 100 sheets. That's about $75. It's expensive. And then the 16 by 19, uh, 13 by 19 comes in a box of 100. And that's about $200. You can buy a sample you pack. Can buy a sample pack. 11, six, six yeah, pieces, you can buy a, yeah. Yeah, by the time you finish <laughs> with, uh, when we do the workshops, we make we make packages for you. So like for 20 bucks, you get, you know, get the film, you get the paper, you get the sauce, you get everything. Okay, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna just pass the mic over to Lois. Okay, traditional image transfer. Okay, so this is the traditional Polaroid image transfer process. Okay, and I'm not going to show you the stop action <laughs> <laughs> segment of that. Um, and I think a lot of you have probably done that, but we do have a sample here uh, for you to look at. It's what you do in that case is instead of waiting for the emulsion to come off, you actually peel apart the film before it's developed. And you take the, um, the actual the negative side of the film, apply it to your paper, and roll it down. And the, the dyes are transferred to your paper. Uh, it was really a great process. The, the colors would be kind of muted, but it was, it was a really, uh, it was a great look. And it, not something like a water, exactly, exactly. OK. Okay, so this is this is the transfer that we did, and, and this piece is going to be passed around. Uh, same image as before, only this is the, the now the the image transfer rather than the emulsion lift. Oops. Okay, so now here's the the down and dirty quick uh, image transfer. I'm coating the paper putting down the image, rolling it. I'm very quick. <laughs> Ta-da. That's the fastest I've moved in a long time. <laughs> what kind of paper do you use? Uh, I like to use Arches 88. It's, a, an, it's actually a screen printing paper. It's called uh, a water leaf paper because it has no, um, no binders, no, uh, no chemicals. Um, I forget what the other term is. Hmm? No sizing, that's it. Um, and I think it absorbs the, uh, the inks a lot better. Uh, I've done, I have done it, I don't know if you saw that little, that little image that's on the, the poster out there, that dress, uh, the pink dress. That was done on Arches uh, watercolor, 300 pound watercolor paper, like this big. Um, it transferred, but not as well. I happen to like the look because they're antique dresses and I wanted it to look old. Uh, but the Arches 88 gives you a much better transfer, and it's a, a lot easier to work with and a lot cheaper than the watercolor paper. Oops, go back. I did it, okay. All right, so we're going to transfer the same image that we, we did before, only I'm going to be using... Um, and the arches. You could use any, any uh, other printmaking film too. If you have some Reeves BFK or anything like that, you can uh, you can use that. The less sizing, the better. Okay. So, oh, let's try this one. <laughs> All right. Again, same. So same same exact transfer, same exact film. Um, only this time we're using a piece of Orchis 88. It's a, it's a much lighter piece of paper and, as I said, more absorbent. Um, I've cut this so that it's square to match the, the image. So I kind of, I like to lay it over there and, and find a nice arrangement. 
Uh, and what I do is, um, uh, let's do it this way. Okay, I'm right-handed. I will lay it down, emulsion side down, on the paper. Okay. Um, and I'll find a place where I want it to be. And then I'll actually tape the transparency down to the table, just so it doesn't shift too much. Okay. Now, I'm also, because this is a slippery paper or a slippery tablecloth, I'm going to put just a, a hint of tape on the corners here. Uh, there, if you're doing a series of images like this, it's really important to get a, a template made on your table so that every piece of paper starts in the same spot and every transfer, every uh, sheet of acrylic is, is in the same place. So, you, so all of your images have some kind of uh, continuity. Okay, that should do. All right, so now I'll test that. All right, that looks good. Okay. Now we take some ketchup. No. <laughs> These are just very handy bottles. Um, what I like to do, you can either brush this on um, or roll it on. I, I prefer to roll it, but I'll, um, uh, and actually I'll do that so you can see. You saw how the other was brushed on. I'm going to roll this on just so you can see how I do this. This is not, oh, sorry. This is not super sauce. This is a very rare commodity. It's Purell hand cleaner. Uh, it's probably one of the only photographic processes that you come away from with clean hands and smelling really good. Okay. Purell? Uh, Purell generally has the, the highest alcohol content. I think it's usually around 63%. Um, I have been to the dollar store and found some that were, and I've used it. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't seem to last as long. But um, so you recommend Purell, but you could. I Purell. recommend it, but yeah, I've absolutely used Dollar Store hand cleaner. Um, so I'm just going to spritz it on here. Another technical term. Okay, uh, and very generously. And now I'll just kind of like touch it down. I'll kind of dab it here and there with the roller, just to make sure that I'm getting it all over. And I'll start rolling, very slowly at first so that it starts to kind of sink into the paper. If you're a messy person, you might want to cover your image mm -hmm. over here. Uh, you know, I've done a lot of these, so I, I don't think about it. But at the beginning, yes, I did splatter. So be careful. Um, if, you're not too, if you're not too concerned with registering the image on the paper, if you want to cut it up later, uh, what I generally do is coat both sides of the paper because you really want it to be wet and it because it evaporates really quickly. So I'm just going to keep rolling this on. Wasn't there a song like that? Rolling, rolling, rolling. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Okay. And you want it to look fairly smooth, you know, because every ridge that you see in the uh, in the cleaner will show up. Okay, that looks pretty good. But did you say both sides and you flipped it over? Or? Uh, yeah, I didn't flip it this time because I'm registering this so that it, it fits perfectly within that square. But if you if you don't care or if you're very good at laying things down by eye, um, do both sides. Oh, that the image side and that side. Of the paper, yes. The arch is 88, yeah. I generally do both sides, so it really gets soaked with the, uh, the hand cleaner. Okay, I think we're ready to go. All right, now I'm also going to use the brayer to, to put it down. The larger the image is, I was doing, you know, pretty large images, the, the, the more handy this brayer becomes. Um, so now you can see I've got it kind of lined up. All right, I'm going to start to lay it down, and I actually roll it down with the brayer. So that it really makes a good contact 
with the paper. And I already smeared it. Okay. Uh, you will smear it if you've put too much stuff on, which I did. I have to tell you, every time I do this demo in school, no matter what I demo to my class, the first one is always wrong. So I'm consistent, at least. But, but that's okay. That's, actually, that's one of the things I love about this, uh, this process, or, or these processes, is that, um, you know, remember being in the dark room, and you'd, you'd, you'd do something, and, and maybe your timing was a little off, or something, and all of a sudden, you got something that was just amazing. How did I do that? I don't know. I don't remember. Um, it was this, this luck, this just, the, you know, the photo gods were conspiring, and, and made something happen that was nice. Um, and occasionally that happens this way too. It, you, you never know what you're going to get. Uh, and for me, that's the fun of it. Just, and also being able to get dirty. You know, you know having that um, missing you getting, getting your hands into the chemistry or. And this is the same film. The same, the same film. OK. So I think good. So I'm going to. Feel it. You can go over it. It's you really you can touch it without too much problem. Um, you have to wait. Hmm? You have to wait a while. Or? You're supposed to wait about a minute, but I'm very impatient. <laughs> I'm one of those instant gratification people. All right, and then uh, when you roll it down this way, you then lift it up this way. Let's see. And instead of pulling it straight up, you want to just kind of roll it back on itself a little bit at a time and check to see that it's coming up. Okay. There we go. Take the tape off. Okay, and here's the finished transfer. Okay, so it's it's a relatively, I don't want to say easy, but it's easily learned, um, and with with things that are easily gotten, you know, except for maybe the the, the uh, transparency, but. Um, and when you're on a roll, you could you could make you know dozens of these at a sitting. <laughs> what little one? Oh, do a little one. Yeah. Okay, all right. Yes. So this process needs to be done something that's porous that the will be organic. Yeah, and you the, really. And the super soft could be on something that's not so. It's a. Uh, it, it could be on wood or. Yeah, the super sauce can be on other substrates that are not as porous. This really needs the porous. Uh, although, I have to say, I taught a class recently, and I had a student who's one of these overachievers. Uh, she brought in everything she could think of, and we, um, and we tried transferring to everything. And it got so that she was eating a salad, and I said to her, you know, you could probably transfer that leaf at you know, the rate you're going, because she did leather and wood. And, and, and we both looked at each other, and she took this leaf out of her salad and washed it off and put it down. And, and we, we transferred to a leaf, and she now has it in a box. And it's drying, and every, as, every day it gets a little smaller, but it, the transfer is still there. So, um, so lettuce is a viable substrate if you're interested. <laughs> so I'm going to do a little one here, and we're just going to, OK, and this one. I'll do both sides. Hmm? With the brush? OK, sorry. All right, here we go. Right. I need more. OK, so we're just going to. The, the nice thing about this is that you really, you can't ruin anything with it. I'm, I'm brushing it. If, if you get it on yourself, it's, it just disappears. Okay, I'm going to do the back on this one now. Okay. 
okay. All right, so we're gonna just drop this on here and see how it works. Um, staples. <laughs> I, I have a gallon of it. <laughs> okay. All right, so ch if you have anything with text on it, make sure that you can, you know, read it when it goes down so that it, it will look right. All right, so now I'm just going to place this on here. And I'm just going to drop it on there and then tack it with the roller. And again, as I said, you, you should leave this for about a minute. But I have to see what's, what's going on. So it's bigger when you peel it off in the same direction that you rolled it on? Yes. And you can see this one. I did not wait the minute. So if you, I don't know if you can see this, but there's some some ink, you'll see when you get up, there's a little bit of ink, there's spots of ink left on this, and there are little spots of ink missing from here. But I kind of like that look. It's, it's kind of, it kind of gives it this vintage look, so. Whether you're a hobbyist or a professional, b &H has the answers to your questions. Experience a world of technology at our New York City Superstore. Connect with us online or give us a call. Our staff of experts is happy to help.